Oh no, look at my bank, there's only a hundred thousand gold in it. Once again, unfortunately, recently I acquired an addiction to collecting burnt shrimp and I invested my billions into that so we have no money left, save for a hundred K. Now the goal today is to rebuild my bank using only this money and RuneScape's new best moneymaker. Now the other videos I made on rebuilding primarily used a crossbow. Today we're going to do something a bit different and we're going to be using melee. Specifically, we're going to be using the Dragon Mace. A very old and generally not used item, but recently it actually got changed so it's actually quite viable as a mid-game crush weapon. And where are we going to be taking this bad boy? Well, into the wilderness to one of the new wildy bosses, Vedion. More specifically, Calvarion. Calvarion is probably one of the best bosses in the game right now to rebuild a bank because the requirements to kill it are extremely low. Gear-wise, you don't need pretty much anything, and the boss can be killed very quickly even with lower level stats. Now, the first major item we need to buy is of course the weapon, always the most important, and like I mentioned, we're going to pick up the Dragon Mace. The Dragon Mace now has the same attack speed as a Scimitar, but uses Crush. Now, Calvarion and Vedion are very weak to Crush, so this is definitely going to be our best starting weapon. Now we really want to be very cost effective here because although we have 100k, one thing to keep in mind is it costs 50,000 to go into the pit for the first time. Each time you kill Calvarion or Vedion, it will discount the entry fee by 10,000, which means assuming you get 5 kills in a row without dying to a PKer, you will never pay to enter. Now I've already paid the entry fee, but if we do happen to die, I want to at least have one more payment to get in because to start off here if we die twice I mean that challenge is over. So I'm actually only going to spend half of my money. So to remain incredibly cost effective we're going to buy just climbing boots for a few hundred GP. We're going to buy a single dose of super combat, a prayer potion. Now probably the single most important item besides the weapon is going to be my amulet. Now part of what makes this boss so cost effective is we can use a salve amulet enchanted. This item costs nothing but gives us a massive damage bonus against undead monsters which Vedion is. Oh my god we finally found it. Over here to the haunted mines. So we're just going to chisel a few of these gems here and there we go we have our best in slot amulet for pretty much no investment. Okay so one other item we're definitely going to need is the royal seed pod not strictly required. Calvarion resides in under 30 wilderness, which means if you're quick, you can teleport out from PKers every single time. Alternatively, you could just buy a Amulet of Glory or a Ring of Wealth and teleport out with that, but you have to be paying even more attention. Now we're going to go buy some Barrow's Gloves, but we can't afford the expensive ones, so I think we're just going to go for the Rune Gloves for now. Only 5,000 for those bad boys, and a massive gear upgrade at that. Now to go in the offhand slots, we're going to buy... no we're not, never mind. And that's pretty much all the damage gear we need right now. To go with it, I think we're going to buy the monk robe top and bottom. A, honestly, a pretty good option, because one thing that's really great about this boss as well, you can take no damage. You don't need to protect melee pretty much throughout the entire fight, and all the other damage is avoidable. Okay, so here's our beginner gear setup. We're pretty much ready to go. We're just bringing a prayer book with us as well. There's no pages in it, so it's only giving us a minor prayer bonus. Now, how much is our risk right now? Well. 10,000 gold, so almost nothing. Now, I have no idea where this boss is. I know it's close to Clan Wars, so we can just run up from here. In hindsight, though, I think I just need to get a Games Necklace because the Court Beast Lair is right beside it, so that's definitely going to be the closest teleport. Now, you can peek into the dungeon, but unfortunately, you need 20 kills to unlock the ability, which I don't have yet. I only have one. So we're just going to have to hope that no one's in it and hop around a couple worlds. Okay, there we go. We got our first free world. Rat. Oh my god, rat. <laughs> well, uh, snooze you lose, I guess. Holy, there's a lot of people here. Okay, so the fight is very simple. Every single attack, Vedyam will summon these lightning strikes on the ground. It will be at least one tile away from you, so pretty much every single attack you have to move. If you get hit by the lightning, you'll take some damage, but it's not anything too impactful. Once Vedion is down to around half HP, he will summon uh, these dogs that you have to kill. You won't be able to damage him otherwise. Once the dogs are dead, you will just continue to attack Vedion until it's down to zero HP, at which point he will change to a different form, also summoning a giant AoE attack around his corpse. 
The only attack that kind of sucks to be hit by is this directional shield bash attack. If you get hit with it, you won't be able to attack Vidyam for like five or six seconds. So it really does slow down the kill on top of taking damage from him. Besides that though, you just repeat the same fight. You attack Vidyam until he's under half HP. He summons more dogs. You kill the dogs and then you kill Vidyam. Honestly, a really simple boss fight. And even in the gear I'm using right now, you're pretty damn accurate thanks to the salve amulet. And there we go, our first kill at Calvarion for three super restores and some super compos. Not bad. So even with just the dragon mace and some questionable gear, the kill times are still very quick. Kill two and we get 120 death runes and some food drops. Okay, there we go. That is a decent drop at least. About 30k in blood runes. Although we could keep going, I think uh, we actually have enough money to make a few minor gear upgrades. Okay, and after selling off the runes and our prayer potion, we have an extra 62,000 gold to work with while keeping uh, 50k in the bank just in case we die. So we're going to use this money to buy the pages to my book. <laughs> we're going to buy the Bandos page set for about 15k, which will give us a plus 5 prayer bonus and plus 2 strength. A pretty good option because I'm not going to take the time to go get the defender. We're just going to have to use the mother off hands. Now another extremely useful item, although not entirely required, is the myth cape. This is a pretty cheap item, only 10,000 gold, and actually provides a strength bonus uh, because we're not going to really want to bring a fire cape, plus we don't have one for this challenge anyway. We have to go get it and I don't think it's worth the time. Now finally, we're also going to upgrade to Proselyte. Proselyte will offer the biggest prayer bonus out of any gear setup we could bring. I might switch over to Black Dehyde, you know, if we get attacked a lot, but Proselyte will help us save on prayer potions, thus saving us some money. Uh, definitely looking like an NPC here, but whatever. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, kill five and we get the Skull of Vedion. Holy crap. Oh my god, the item is quite rare. Uh, I don't think it's very valuable. Apparently it's worth 800k, but I have my suspicions. There we go, we sold it for 411k. And wow, okay, just like that, we can make some pretty significant upgrades here. Firstly, although the Dragon Mace has served us well, we're going to upgrade to another crush weapon, the Seracnus Cudgel. The Cudgel is actually really cheap now. It used to be like a mill item, and now it's like 200k, so yeah, it's Kind of dirt cheap now. On top of that, we're going to upgrade to the Helm of Need is Not. Okay, kill speed's definitely better with the Cudgel. I uh, wasted another 5 kill trip, no interruptions, no worries. So far, we've not run into a single PK. -er. And honestly, that's great because I have no experience in the wilderness at all. So this is going to all be kind of new to me. I have no idea how to escape. I have no idea where to run. We're just going to kind of figure that out as we go and just kind of experiment a little bit. So that inventory was worth 160k. Most drops aren't worth a ton, but you kill the boss so quickly that even these kind of mid-level drops add up over time. Okay, there was our first PK attempt. So escape method alpha. First uh, first option is simply just teleport out. Smash that seed and just hope for the best. If you're quick or they splash their tele block, you're just you're just out. Waste a bit of time, but not a big deal. Where am I actually going? I should have looked this up before. What the Oh my god. Okay, well. There's our first death. Uh, we lost 100 and 140k. I don't really know what I was doing there. We gotta rethink this a bit. Okay, so I was going for the Ferox Enclave, and uh, apparently I've learned that doesn't actually work. You can't go in there if you're teleblocked anyway, so that was pointless. Uh, my next thought was run to the Corporal Beast Cave. A similar problem, you can't enter the cave while you're in combat, so it's kind of a moot point. So those two escape methods aren't really going to work. We're going to have to find something else. Ooh, there we go. That's actually a good drop. 220 oak planks, or 100k from a single kill. Not bad. We also have to rebuild up our fee discount. If we die again, we will have to owe some money, which would kind of suck. Oh my god, I thought I got something else. Okay, so we got another pretty solid drop, 150k worth of Sanchu Serums. 
that combat task baited me a little bit. Okay, so the amount of PKers that is definitely picking up. So I think what I'm actually going to do is swap out my Monk's Robe for some Black Dehyde. This will increase my magic defense and make it a lot less likely for people to land freezes on me, which should make it a lot easier to get away. And to be honest, the prayer bonus, while it's nice, it's not required. You get so many Blighted Restore drops that you're never wanting for prayer anyway. So I think overall this will just be better. Hey, look at that, Grimy Renars, those are worth quite a bit. I think that's the most valuable, like, non-unique drop. 350k from just that alone, it was like the first kill of the trip too. Ah, screw it, we're just gonna bank. The real issue with banking is not how much time it takes, it's just the fact that if you leave, your world will get taken immediately. What is that? <laughs> I got a collection log pop up from the skeletal dogs. I'm like, what the hell do they drop? But apparently, well, you can get this skeleton champion scroll, which we just got. It's a one to the 5,000 to get that thing. Totally useless, but oh my god. That will save us some time in the future if we ever go for the champion's cave. What a weird place to get it from, though. So after selling off that inventory of loot, we are actually up to nearly 2 mil, which is a fair bit of money, but unfortunately, I think our next major upgrade is probably going to cost us 3 to 4 mil still. So for now, we're just going to continue on with this gear, but the cash is definitely stacking up. So there we go, that is kill number 50. Uh, no deaths so far after that first one, so... So I'm pretty happy about that. There are certainly a number of PKers around, but most of them I've been able to get away just by simply just teleporting out quickly. Works most of the time. Okay, I actually just turned on the bossing information plugin. I'm pretty curious to see how many kills per hour I'm getting with the Sarachnus Cudgel. On the wiki, the high-end amount of kills you can get per hour is 50, which I don't think we're going to be anywhere close with the Cudgel and with getting interrupted by PKers and your banking and whatnot, but I'm kind of curious, so let's do a few kills. Okay, so we've been here for about half an hour, and it looks like I'm getting about 25 to 30 kills per hour with the cudgel. Pretty damn good for using such a dirt cheap item. If you never banked, you could get more, I'm sure, but I don't know if it's worth taking the risk, because regardless, you're going to get interrupted by PK eventually anyway. Might as well just bank your stuff. All right. Oh, God, where am I running to? Okay, we're going to have to go for a freeze, I think. We brought these ice barrage sacks. Oh, okay, that's a hit. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, that's not that hard, actually. Okay, bless these ancient ice sacks. These things save lives for sure. So escape method number one is, of course, just teleporting out. But if you aren't able to do that, you get teleblocked. Escape method number two is uh, pretty simple. You just freeze them, run under them, log out. Now, I was actually kind of lucky that I was able to land the freeze in the gear I was wearing. So we're going to bring uh, just some Zerishan robes just to cast the Ice Barrage because otherwise I'm just really inaccurate in Black Dehyde. But yeah, that was a, that's a pretty fun actually. Oh, there we go. See you later. Okay, so I just finished up with an uninterrupted hour of Calvarion. No one took my world, no one PK'd me, it was great. Now, my bossing info is showing 33 kills per hour. I think that's a little inflated because I think it paused a couple times while I was banking. But I would say 30 kills per hour, reasonably accurate. So we actually crested the 100 kill mark at Calvarion. I think we're at 109 right now. Which also means our bank has grown quite a bit. We're actually up to 4.3 mil and it is definitely time for us to invest in a new item. And it's still not the weapon. We still don't quite have enough money for that. Plus this is going to be a bigger upgrade overall. The entire time we've been using a prayer book but there's a much better option and that is going to be the Dragonfire Shield. We can buy this for 3.5 mil and charge it and it's going to give a pretty significant strength bonus while just making this way tankier as well. And at this point, better than our next closest weapon upgrade, which I think is actually the Zamorakian Hasta. Hey, there we go. A collection log, at least. There is the Dragon Two-Hander. Pretty iconic item, but not worth a ton. But, you know, we're filling out the log. 
kind of the entire reason why I wanted to do all these videos on my main account anyway. So far we've gotten three collection logs from this grind, which is pretty good. All right, that is kill number 150 at Calvarion. And honestly, I've just been having a good amount of fun with this boss. Not sure if we're making very good money per hour or anything, but it's a hoot for sure. I can't believe that just worked. Okay, I watched... Oh my god, give me a sec. So I watched a video, I think it was RuneScape Chronicles or something, some community channel. They showed a really funny way to escape PKers at the wildy bosses. So what you do is you go into the outside and then pretend to enter. Now, some of the emotes look pretty similar to the crawling animation. We just went ahead and bowed right in front of the entrance and it looked like we were going in it. The PKR went in and at that point they're screwed. We just ran to the south a bit, logged out. That one is definitely the most fun by far. I'm excited that worked. Oh, why did I, why did I do this? I decided to go to the multivariant. Big, big mistake. Well, we're dead. Oh, look at that, guys. We actually got a valuable drop. The Ring of the Gods. Oh, man, that's so lucky. We're still under 200 kills, I'm pretty sure. The Ring of the Gods on kill count 182. This thing is uh, not worth as much as it used to be, but still, a 4 mil drop is going to bring us so close to one of the biggest upgrades for this boss. That being the Vigorous Chain Mace. The Ring of the Gods has crashed a lot, but so has the Chain Mace, which means this should put us really, really close. Oh, that's exciting. We're actually filling up this collection log pretty quickly. Alright, so we were able to sell it for 4.1 mil, which has brought our cash stack up to 7 mil. Plus, we have the Dragonfire Shield we could sell back. Is that enough? Oh, it's pretty damn close. Okay, so what we're going to do instead, just because uh, we're going to skip a couple steps otherwise, we're going to upgrade to the Zamorakian Hasta. Surprisingly, this is actually marginally better than the Sharachnus Cudgel, assuming you put it on Crush, which you definitely should do. I would say this is not strictly a required upgrade. For how much more expensive it is, it's really only marginally better. But because we're still about 500k short of the Vigoras, we're going to try it out a little bit. Okay, honestly, I've done a couple kills. It seems pretty damn similar to me. I don't know why, something about the, just the animation of the thing bugs me a little bit, but it's a gear upgrade, so we definitely gotta go for it. No way, you are joking me. Oh my god. Well, video is pretty much done then. I think I've gotten like everything I needed. 38 mil? Is this thing? No, there's no way it's worth this much still, right? Calvarian has been so good to me, holy crap. That is the Voidwalker Blade as well, which means we literally have like one, one collection log left here. I think we just need the Dragon Pickaxe and the pet, I suppose, but... Okay, it's not worth 38 mil, but it's still worth a good amount. It looks like it's actively traded price is 31 mil right now. I don't care too much, we're just gonna sell it for 30 mil, and there it is. So much cash infused into the account. Well, with that, we can just go straight to the Ursine Chain Maze. To be honest, it's not even that much more expensive than the Vigoras anyway. But yeah, we're gonna go buy it straight up for 15 mil for the Ursine. And the best part here is we get to keep all our other gear. We don't have to sell off our Dragonfire Shield, we don't have to sell off. We are pretty much good to go. The DPS increase from the Vigoras is just massive. It doesn't honestly even compare. It's like a 30 to 40% DPS increase. It's just huge. Now, while you use this, you are going to have a bit higher risk because you're going to lose at least a thousand Revenant Ether if you die, but it is worth it. I mean, you don't die that often at Calvarion. There's so many ways to get away. And just a straight up increase in your kills per hour, definitely worth it if you can afford it, of course. Now, to go along with it, I also bought a Berserker Ring and we're going to imbue it as well. Okay, so here's my new risk with my new setup. We're keeping the Earth Sign, the Dragonfire Shield, and the Berserker Ring. We're risking 230k plus another 150, I think. For, so about a 400k risk. But we're bringing some brews, and then we're hopefully going to be able to tank out any PKers. So the chance of us dying is pretty low. And yeah, I'm excited to try this thing out. My max hit has gone up so much. It's like 75 or something like that. It's crazy. Right now my kills per hour are up to 52, which I think is pretty accurate, although again, if PKers come and screw your day over, it's going to slow you down, but uninterrupted, I think you could get probably about 55 kills per hour at Calvarion. 
with the Ursine Chain Maze. So that's it, I guess, guys. There's not much else really to get here. I mean, I, I could get the Dragon Pickaxe, of course, but I got incredibly lucky and the rebuild is pretty well complete. Now, obviously getting the Voidwalker Blade and the Ring of the Gods, pretty lucky for my kill count. I think it's pretty realistic that in about two to 300 kills, you could go from nothing to owning the Vigora's Chain Maze. And from there, you're pretty much good to go. You have everything you need to just grind up this boss. <laughs> like, to be honest, I have 20 mil left in the bank right now. There's just nothing for me to spend it on for further gear upgrades here, at least. So that's it. Calvaron is definitely one of my favorite rebuild bosses right now, and I definitely recommend giving it a try. I have no experience with the Wilderness, and I only actually died, I think, three times one being at the actual Vedion boss, so it's not super high risk, pretty good reward, and actually pretty fun. Thanks for watching as always guys, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Aleandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also, thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.